So today I'm gonna to share a secret about how you can get the best pricing for your 3D print models that a lot of people don't really know because it doesn't come up. It's not part of the traditional supply chain. So I'm gonna explain it in as much detail as possible so the next time you can come to us to get a part quoted, you know exactly what to ask for. Now the secret is this long lead times. This is not because we're lazy. It's not because we want to push projects out as far as we possibly can and procrastinate. It's about machine utilization. So inside of a factory, we have a lot of 3D printers and not all of those 3D printers are used all of the time. But generally what happens to us is that a client will come to us and they'll say, I want 100,000 pieces and I want them delivered in two months. That is my timeline. And we'll say, okay, fine. And we'll start cranking out 100,000 pieces and we'll figure out how many machines are necessary to meet that production target. That would create like a spike in demand, but then as soon as that client is done, demand drops back down. And while we are servicing that client, those machines cannot be used for any other clients, which means that you have to basically pay all of our bills that whole time that we're doing your work. If you came in and said, I want 10 million parts in a month, that's gonna use every machine that we have. And since you have to do that, you are creating a lot of risk for us, which means that we have to impart a lot of cost onto you. Not a lot of cost, but more cost. If you want to reduce your cost per part, the thing you should do is really plan out how many parts do you need in a year? Okay, you would have that number. Let's say you're doing something fairly small, 100 to 1,000 parts a month. We're gonna use 100 just for an easy number. You have 100 parts a month, 1,200 parts a year. There's spare parts for cars or something, whatever it happens to be. Rather than coming to us and saying, I need 1,200 parts, come to us and say, you want 100 parts a month. What this does for you is that number one, we know that you're now a client for the next year. I'm gonna want 100 parts a month, I'm gonna want 1200 parts total, but I want them delivered every 30 days. What we will do then is create that contract. And since we now know that you're there and you're a slow burn underneath, we can give you a better deal because we can use fewer machines. We know that the money will be coming in because we have a contract with you for the next 12 months. And then we're able to put other clients on top of you at the same time. So now you're all sharing the burden of utilization of the machines. And what we would do is instead of having all of our machines making all of your parts as fast as we can, we would have a few machines making a few of your parts every month. The other benefit this gives you is it gives you feedback cycles. For some reason, a batch of material goes bad and we produce parts that are no good to us. You are able to say, those were garbage parts, guys, can't take them and we can get them replaced for you in a fairly ready amount of time. And you're able to track those individual batch parts rather than the giant batch of parts. It makes QC easier and more reliable because you're able to keep a tighter thumb on top of us as we're producing your parts. So you get the advantage of being able to utilize our production more efficiently, which we can pass those savings on to you. You get a chance for better QC. And since we know you're gonna be there for the entire year, we can actually build out a process around your parts because every time a new client comes through, we we have to create a QC process, a verification process for those parts specifically and their specific needs. And if we know you're gonna be doing that for a period of time, we can set up a station for your parts. We can train a person for your particular parts and just improve the process so that you have more reliable parts so that staffing can keep up, QC can keep up, training is on track. We are able to slow burn and utilize capacity better. And since again, we have kind of that long-term project with you, instead of buying a bunch of material all at once, it may be special shipping it just for you, like maybe it's a partial pallet, which can be really expensive to ship. We can put you on top of like shipments of raw materials so that now the cost of raw material is less for you as well. So if you want to reduce your cost for mass production 3D printing, one of the easiest ways is to not ask for a batch of parts. It's to ask for parts in sequence over time, a subscription of parts, basically. That way you get better quality, you get lower cost, you get better customer service, and we have better reliability of the utilization of our facilities. That is the trade-off that we're willing to give to you. So the next time you need a lot of parts made, don't figure out if you need them next month and then you're just gonna store them for a year. That's old thinking. That's what you would do if you had to ship them across the ocean. Instead, say, I need this many parts this year. I'm gonna need at least however many per month for the next six to 12 months. Can you guys produce them for me? We'll quote that and you will get a better deal than you would get if you asked us for the full $100,000 all at once. As for 10,000 a month, you have less warehousing, less storage, and less cost per part. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys and gave you some insight as to how mass production 3D printing works. The dynamics of it are totally different from other supply chains, and we should do a deep dive on this at some point. So do subscribe to the channel to see those videos in the future, and comment down below with other topics that you'd like us to cover. Have a great day, everybody.